Hey there, Miranda. Did you make it to the new place yet? How's it looking in there? Well, it's kind of empty right now, but I'm totally loving it. My mind's racing with all the possibilities. And the air, it's like super fresh and clean. I feel like I can finally take a breath without any worries. Last time I was here, I was all nervous about meeting Nicholas's parents, so I didn't really get a chance to explore. But now that everything's settled, I can finally have a good look around. The view up here is amazing. I'm totally digging the countryside vibes. I think you'll totally love it too, Mom. I'm so happy for you, honey. I can't wait to see it too. Are you done unpacking all your boxes yet? Not yet, Mom. We had the movers handle the heavy stuff and put them where we want for now. But all the little things are still packed up in boxes. It's going to take a bit of time before I can have the house all set up for you to come and visit. No worries, sweetie. You'll have all the time in the world to get it done. Just make sure not to push yourself too hard, all right? Take breaks whenever you need them. You've always had a knack for getting fevers when you get too worked up about things. Take care of yourself, okay? Your health comes first. I'm doing great, Mom. Nicholas takes such good care of me, you wouldn't believe it. Living here feels like it's going to be a lot better for my health, you know? I won't be working, at least not right away. So I can take my time getting used to the house and do things at my own speed. I won't push myself to do anything too fast. I've been thinking about working from home once we settled in properly. I'm really happy that you found a place that's good for your health, sweetheart. By the way, isn't it lucky that Nicholas got a job in his hometown? Having his parents nearby will be so helpful if you ever need anything. Plus, it'll give you a chance to get to know the in-laws even better. That's so true. When we arrived, they already had burgers and drinks ready for us. Wow, how kind of them. They're farmers, right? It must be nice to have access to fresh produce straight from the farm every single day. Talk about farm to table, right? You're absolutely right. The food they cooked was incredibly tasty. But I'm at a loss for what we can give them in return. They're being so generous to us, and they even mentioned bringing over some eggs and veggies. I feel guilty just taking things from them without giving back. Unfortunately, I don't have the physical strength to assist them in their fields. I wouldn't be much help there. Can you help me come up with ideas for what we could give them? Hmm, let's think this through. Since you just moved in, you don't have anything from your own garden yet. How about preparing some homemade dishes? You've always been a talented cook. You could use some of the ingredients they gave us to whip up a delicious meal for everyone now and then. Everyone here has always raved about your cooking. I'm sure your husband's family will love it too. That's a great idea. Thanks, Mom. Oh, my sweet girl. No matter how many years go by, you'll always be my baby. I can still remember the days when you had braces. It feels just like yesterday. And now, here you are, all grown up, in your own place, making plans for the future. You're someone's wife now, and it still feels a little surreal to me, but in a good way. I'm so proud of the amazing woman you've become. You were quite the tearful one during the ceremony, weren't you? I remember asking you what was up, and you said you felt like it was still too soon for me to get married. Don't miss me too much now that I've moved away, okay? I mean, you did say you were going to turn my room into a sewing room, so I figured you'd be pretty occupied. <laughs> oh, I was only teasing. I wouldn't dare touch your room. I'll leave it exactly as it is in case your hubby ever comes to visit. Just give me a heads up when you're all settled down. We can't wait to come visit you as soon as we can. What? That soon? You don't have to come all the way here just to check up on me. I'll be fine, I promise. To be honest, I just want to bring my motorcycle too, maybe hit a trail. It's been way too long since I've had a good ride in the countryside. It's the perfect excuse for me to hop back on and feel the wind in my hair. And honestly, I won't even be staying long at your place. I just want to get some refreshments. Mom, you're getting close to retirement age, you know? You really shouldn't be riding a motorcycle anymore. Especially not in the mountains. It would be awesome to see you, no doubt. But please promise me you'll be careful. I appreciate your concern, honey, but trust me, I'll be just fine. I'll make sure to drive safely, I promise. Plus, I won't be going alone this time. I've got three other people joining me. Riding in a group has its own advantages, you know? I can't wait to show you the house. You're going to love it. Hi, honey. Will you be able to come home early today? Sorry, babe. I think I'll be staying out late tonight, too. There's a year-end party happening at my company, and I gotta be there. Oh, really? That sounds like a good time.
Actually, there's something I wanted to discuss with you. It's about your parents' farm, to be more specific. Oh, what about it? Did something happen? We talked about it before. Your parents asked me to lend a hand in the fields again. I gave it a try this time, but it was really tough for me. I ended up pushing myself too hard and got a fever. My health has been worsening lately. I think I need to take a step back from assisting for a while, but... Now isn't really a good time to take a break. You know my parents don't have enough people helping in the fields right now. I understand that. But... I'm sorry, but my body has always been weak. You knew that about me already, didn't you? As far as I know, you're lacking in stamina. When we were dating, you seemed fine. It wasn't like you were fainting all the time or something. You were even able to go to work every day. To be honest, I'm not even sure your body is really weak. You didn't see my weakness because I was doing my best to take care of myself. I thought you understood my condition. Not really. I thought that was your way of getting attention from people. I never saw you as weak. I know that girls do that sometimes to try and get other people's attention or to get others to do things for them. That wasn't what I was doing. I was born with a weak body. You should have known that you were expected to help out at the farm. You married into a farmer family. You knew what you were getting yourself into. Don't act like this is news to you. Now, hold on a minute. I knew your parents had a farm, but I never agreed to work there. You said that it was okay and that I didn't have to force myself to help. You said that you aren't helping out either since you have a company job. You also assured me that you weren't taking over the farm. Don't try to blame this on me. Just use your head a little. I was only trying to ease you into it. Yes, I have my own job, but I'm also the second son of a farmer. I need to help out when I can. You married into a farming family, so that same expectation falls on you too. Does that mean the move to your hometown wasn't a coincidence? This was your plan all along? From the way we are talking now, it seems like everything was decided for me. Of course. I was the one that put in the transfer request. I always intended to move back to my hometown after I got married. Then I was right. You married me because you wanted me to help out on the farm. I don't like the way you're wording this. You're making it sound like I tricked you into this. Don't you love me? I do. I love you. It's just that... Then you can put up with helping, right? Do it for me, please. You just have to try a little harder and get used to it, that's all. I want to be useful. But there will be times when I just can't. I've tried to tell your family about my condition, but they wouldn't even listen to me. They just think that I'm some spoiled city girl. Well, no surprise there. Living in the city has clearly spoiled you rotten. You wouldn't even recognize a real day of hard work if it smacked you in the face. Quit your pathetic whining and get your lazy butt to work on the farm. Don't you think what you just said was a bit harsh? I think we need some time apart. I want to go back to my mom's house. I'm fine with that. But are you sure you really want to go back to your parents' house so soon? Wouldn't that be a little embarrassing for you? Think about it. Your mom is going to be so disappointed in you. And she's also going to be so sad. She's going to blame herself for giving birth to a weakling like you. And she would think that she caused your marriage to fail. Then she'll carry that guilt burden for the rest of her days. I... I don't know about that. Well, it sure seems that way. If your mom dares to ask me about it, I'll be straight up honest with her. Looks like she raised herself a total wimp. And I sure as heck don't need a weak wife. You can't say something like that to her. Oh, great. Now hurry up and chug your medicine like a good little kid and get your sorry self to bed. You've got such an early day tomorrow. You better magically feel better by then, got it? Hi, baby. Where are you? I've tried to contact you so many times, but you never responded. Mom? Yes, it's me, your mom, Renee. I went up to your house, but no one was there. Did you guys go out? I told you that I was coming for a visit today. How could you forget? I'm here. If you are, then where? I'm in the shed. Mom, you have to save me. I can't move at all. I lost consciousness a while ago. I just woke up. What? What are you even doing in there to begin with? I'll be there soon, honey. Wait for me. Wait. Come alone. I don't want anyone else with you. I'm a mess now, and I probably smell really bad. Your friends are with you, right? I don't want them to see me like this. It will be too embarrassing for me to handle. What are you talking about? Why are you in a situation like this? I'm so sorry, Mom. I was stupid. I was tricked. 
I'm so sorry for involving you in this. This is all my fault. Wait a minute. Don't tell me that Nicholas was the one to put you in that shed. I'm in front of the shed right now, but there's a lock on it. Wait there. My friends are trying to find a key or something that would break the lock. But don't worry, when we get it open, I'll be the only one that will go in, okay? My health hasn't been well ever since I moved. But I've been helping at Nicholas's parents' farm early in the morning every day. I didn't even take a single day off. Not only do I work in the fields, but I also do the chores for their house, too. But I've hit my limit. I really can't go on another day like this. They all call me weak and useless and criticize everything that I do. They don't listen at all when I tell them about my condition. So that was why they locked you in the shed? They said that a person who can't work doesn't deserve to eat. They even punched me. Nicholas put me in the shed so that I could think about what I did. They did what? What the hell is wrong with that family? I can't believe this. Nicholas was the worst out of them all, I think. But this is my fault for not being healthy. A normal person would have been able to do everything, but I can't do it. This is my fault. No. What are you talking about? Why didn't you tell me earlier? I thought you would blame yourself for all this. That's why I kept quiet. I'm sorry, Mom. I didn't want to make you sad. But none of this is your fault. Please believe that because it's the truth. I have a weak mind and a weak body. That's why I'm in this mess. No. Don't even think that. You did nothing wrong. The family of psychopaths that you married into are the ones who are wrong here. They can't treat you like this. What they did to you was abuse. I thought that I was being spoiled for wanting to leave Nicholas. I have no idea what is normal anymore. They told me that what I was doing was normal for a farmer's wife. They made me believe that I couldn't even do what was expected from a normal wife. That's impossible. What others can do and what you can do will always be different. There are things that you can do that others can't as well. So stop blaming yourself. You're not in the wrong. Oh, I have some good news. My friend borrowed something from a neighbor. They can cut the lock. I'm going to get you out of there, and then we can go home together. I, I promise you'll be safe. Renee, what is the meaning of this? Let me talk to Miranda. She's not picking up my calls. No, I'm the one that's going to be asking questions. How could you treat my daughter like that? How could you break her and then stuff her into a shed like garbage? Did you really think I would let the person that did that to her talk to her? I only put her in there because she was acting selfish. If she doesn't get it, then it just means she deserves to be punished. What you did wasn't punishment. It was abuse. I demand you divorce my daughter right now and don't ever come near us again. Oh, really now? You're going to stop me from talking to my own wife? What is wrong with your whole family? Marrying her was a mistake. What a waste of time and money this has been. I should be the one to say that. I shouldn't have let you marry my daughter and take her away. Do you have any idea the state she was in when I found her? She's completely dehydrated. She was about to pass out again from exhaustion. I don't even want to think about what would have happened if I hadn't gotten to her when I did. She could have died. If you didn't come, this wouldn't be happening. Miranda would still be working out there. She would be building up her stamina. Anyway, I'll give her the divorce if that's what she wants. I don't need someone as useless as her anyway. No one needs a wife like her. She's only going to be a burden to any family. Miranda is my daughter, and I am proud of the woman that she's become. Besides, there's a world of difference between working like a slave and being a good wife. Give me a break. She's nothing special. There are plenty of women like her out there that will fall for anyone that even shows an ounce of kindness to them. And don't think that I'll let her get a divorce without some monetary compensation. I'm going to sue you for the cost of the wedding. By the way, you drove your car on our property, didn't you? You rode through our fields, and I'm going to sue you for the damages done. You already harvested from that field. But if you're going to sue, then don't worry. We will pay you for these damages that you speak of. I will take full responsibility for that. Don't worry. You are an uncivilized bunch of people. My parents were so surprised by your behavior. What were you planning to do when you surrounded my parents with your awful motorcycles? Yeah, they were. I'm never going to forget the frightened look on their faces. But they should have seen that coming. No parent on this planet will just sit idly by where their child has been hurt. Whatever. As long as we get payment, we're going to let it all slide. The next thing I have to do is look for a new wife. You go right ahead and do what you want. But you better believe we'll be pursuing our own damages when it comes to the divorce. Alimony is going to be a doozy for you, I'm sure. 
After all, the divorce is dissolving as a direct result of your dishonesty and abuse. You punched my daughter and locked her in a shed. We'll be suing for pain and suffering on top of emotional damage. My friends and I saw that you locked her in the shed with our own eyes, and we took pictures. Did you think you could get away with that? That was just training. It was for her own good. It wasn't physical punishment or abuse. You can say that all you want, but I think the world has another opinion about that. Fine then. I'm going to pursue alimony as well. On top of that, I'm going to sue for the stress that she has caused me. Sure, you go do that. Put any price you want on it. The court will decide who was in the right and who was in the wrong. We will be filing a complaint with the police. I'm sure you'll be arrested before a court date has even been decided, though. I bet your prison clothes will be real convincing when you try to argue that you didn't abuse her in the divorce hearing. What? You think you can bring the police into it? On what grounds do you think you can do that? Of course I'm going to file a complaint of abuse and battery. Remember, you hit my daughter and then locked her up? That's a crime. That was between my wife and I. The police won't get involved in marital disputes. I guess you have never seen the news before? There are plenty of people who have been arrested for spousal abuse. That has nothing to do with this. You're just trying to confuse me right now. Let me talk to Miranda. I have nothing to say to you anymore. Nope. Can't do that. She's on an IV right now. I don't care. Just let me talk to her. You're an outsider. You have no business being in any conversation about our marriage. You stupid old hag. When will you leave your child alone already? Nicholas, how dare you? You can't talk to my mother like that. Miranda, you're back? There's something wrong with your mother. She isn't right in the head. She wants to send the police after me. You can't let her do that. I read what you guys were talking about. I know what's going on. Then why didn't you stop her? I didn't think that I needed to stop her. I was the one that decided to file that complaint. What? That was you? I can never forget what you and your family did to me. Your mom hit me with the farming tools and your dad was always yelling at me about something. I was so scared. When I sat down because I was feeling unwell, they would kick me. Your older brother looked away and acted like nothing happened. Instead of defending me, you would yell at me as well. I couldn't escape. You got yelled at because you didn't do your job properly. I did what I was able to do. Since we got married, the two of us haven't been home together at all. We would always just pass one another. I lost all hope for us. I thought that the only reason you married me was so that I could go work at your parents' farm like a slave. It wasn't only for that. I do really like you. You thought that I was docile and would just do whatever you say. That's why you like me. That's what your mother said. She needed you to bring home a wife like that. My mom said that without thinking. She didn't mean it. You can say whatever you want now. I won't believe you anymore. You are the cruelest person I've ever met in my whole life. Miranda, you're going to change. You'll become stronger if you would only just stay here. You still love me, don't you? That's why you agreed to marry me. I did. But all those feelings disappeared. They vanished as soon as you put your hands on me and locked me in that shed. But I'm glad you did that. It made me stronger. It made me decide. I'm just sad that my mom was pulled into all this. As soon as I heard my mom's motorcycle, I couldn't hold it in any longer. Miranda, you need to grow up and leave your mother. She spoiled you too much. She made you believe that you could get away with anything just because you have a weak body. That isn't what I think. I know that I have caused many people problems because of my condition, but I did my best not to be a burden to them. There has always been only one person in this world that has never seen me as a burden. That was me, right? I didn't think that your body was that weak. You? You called me a burden every day since we moved here. I'm talking about my mom. She loves me unconditionally, and she taught me to be strong despite my weak body. I feel a little sorry that I couldn't help out your family the way they wanted me to, but you tricked me into going there. You hit me and you locked me up. That wasn't my fault. There is something wrong with your family. All of you lack conscience. I was stupid to have trusted you. I should have never listened to anything you said. Listen, I'll give you whatever you want. I'll pay whatever alimony you ask for. I'll even pay for your medical bills. I'll pay whatever you want, but please, don't go to the police. Please, I can't get arrested. It will ruin my reputation. I won't be able to show my face in my company or my hometown. I'll be ostracized. After what you did to me, did you think money and an apology will solve everything? You need to pay for what you did. Everyone needs to know. 
What you did was a crime. Don't act spoiled. After filing the police report, Nicholas was arrested and put in jail. I also filed for divorce during that time, and it went smoothly. Surprisingly, locking me up in the shed was considered a more serious crime than the physical abuse. It's amazing what you learn each day. Despite it being his first offense, the judge sentenced Nicholas to three months in jail instead of just fining him. The whole town heard about how they mistreated me, resulting in their family being shunned by the community. No one was willing to help them with the farm work anymore and it became difficult for them to manage it with only three family members. Even in jail, Nicholas had to pay alimony and other divorce-related expenses. With no assistance at the farm, they are struggling to come up with the money. Furthermore, the town has warned newcomers about their family, making it impossible for them to receive any outside help. As for me, I moved back in with my parents and I'm gradually recovering from the trauma. I've started working again at my own pace and capacity, while reflecting on my poor judgment of character especially in men. I'm determined to change and do better. I don't want to burden or worry my parents again, so I won't make the same mistake twice. Right now, I'm focusing on spending time with my parents and finding a way to repay their love and support throughout the years. I'm even considering getting my motorcycle license to ride with my mother. However, I need to build up my strength first, so I'm planning to start going to the gym. I'll be cautious to not overexert myself. It might take a while until I'm strong enough to ride a motorcycle, but I won't give up. My goal is to become a strong woman, just like my mother.